it is. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. Pastor's verse of encouragement for this week is found in John 14, verses 1 to 3. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you may be also. And at this time, I'll ask uh, Corny to come and lead us in singing this morning. Good morning. I too would like to say Happy New Year to all of you from our family. Thanks for all the Christmas cards that we've gotten and, and so forth. Uh, it's been a blessing to see some of your families and your extended families that we don't get to see on Sunday mornings in the church. So that's good. Uh, it's good to finally see you guys. I haven't seen you in church all year. Same. <laughs> I mean, it's the first time I'm here this year, so. Uh, but thinking back on what's happened this past year and where God has led us through, uh, I think we can say that, that God leads us all the way. So let's start off with singing number 400. Is it 498? Um, 598. All the way my Savior leads me. No, I'm, I'm up here singing by myself because it, it's, it seems like everyone's kind of losing their voice or lost their voice in our house. Yeah, stand up. The rhymers have started something. <laughs> Whoops. So with everyone losing their voice or lost their voice, you think it'd be quieter around the house, but that doesn't seem to be the case. <laughs> it's still loud with eight people in the house. Uh, but let's sing. All the way my Savior leads me. Also turn to number 574. <clears throat> Revive us again. Glory. 
All right, if you guys want to open up your bulletins, we'll go through uh, what's coming up for the first week of the new year. Um, on Monday, January 2nd at 9 a.m. is uh, Ladies' Breakfast at uh, Reels. Monday, January 2nd at 7 p.m. is the Ministerial Meeting. Um, Wednesday, January 4th at uh, 10 a.m. is Seniors' Coffee Time. Um, what's, it's not in the bulletin, but Thursday at 7 o'clock, youth does start again. So this Thursday, youth at 7. Um, next Sunday, January the 8th, um, Sunday school is on again at 9.30, service again at 10.45. Uh, the defreezings will be here for the morning service. It will be uh, Mission Sunday. Soup and sa uh, sandwich lunch will be served by the team who are going to Mexico and the local mission board. Donations will be accepted with funds raised to split between the Mexico project that the team will be working on and support of Mary Barch who is returning to Bolivia in mid-January. That's next Sunday, so make sure you mark that on your calendars. Um, and then this next week, for those of you that have signed up for the dessert exchange, um, that was uh, set up to uh, bring that to somebody in the, in the church. We also had it signed up as well, and that is this next week. So that's good. All right, next week is the dessert exchange. Uh, prayer requests and praise items. Let's uh, remember to pray for uh, Henry Clausen and his family as they mourn the passing of his wife, Luella Clausen, um, on Wednesday, the 28th. Uh, the funeral service was held on Friday. Also for uh, uh, Laura Hebert, she has been transferred to the Manito Manitou Care Home and is awaiting placement at Salem Home. I also want to uh, remember to pray for Pastor Davey as uh, today is his, officially his first day as uh, the lead pastor and the full-time pastor here. I um, also want to remember to keep praying for Pastor Jake as he uh, steps into the associate lay role and also for, uh, for Pastor-elect Corny and Adriana as they begin their training. Uh, praise item for sus sustaining and protecting us through another year. May we look forward to the new year, remembering that he will he will continue to do that. So that is uh, definitely a praise item for the year that we've had. It's, um, we've been reminded in our men's Bible study that uh, we need to be thankful for the trials also. So even the, the good times, but also the bad times, it builds us and it teaches us. So um, definitely something to thank God for. Missionaries to pray for this week, um, Terry and Rosie Bannon um, from Ethnos Canada, and they're out of Mitchell right now, so uh, their email address is there. If you turn to the back, upcoming CFC events, the membership meeting, um, this is a, this, we're trying out the new thing for uh, the advisory board, it's going to turn, turn into membership meetings, and uh, I think our first one of the new trial is uh, January 9th, and that's at 7 o'clock. Um, agenda items will include some reports from the committees. So the committee reports that would happen at advisory will now happen at membership for everyone to hear as well. Um, discussion and planning for the year and church directory update and etc. cetera. Um, we are planning for a baptism service early in the new year. So if anyone is interested, please talk to one of the ministerial. Also, if anyone is thinking about membership, please talk to one of the ministerial as well. It says, calling all ladies. We are planning a church ladies retreat, um, 18 plus, for March 24th 25th, to the 25th, 2023, held at our church. There is a sign-up sheet in the back of the church to see how many ladies would be interested in attending. More info will be announced closer to the event. The cost is determined depending on the amount of interest. If you have any questions, please talk to Shannon Cron, Lisa Gunther, Adriana Fair, Monica Giesbra, or Anna Reimer. So I assume just one of them. You don't need to talk to all of them. I think one will, one will do. But they're all there. So, um, And then there is a, a prayer for the new year that uh, I will let you guys read or uh, make that your prayer this, this week as well. Have I missed anything? All right, that's good. Then I did my job. Um, if I, at this time, I'll call up the ushers and then let's uh, bow for a word of prayer.
All right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this, this new year. We thank you for this beautiful day and uh, the beauty that you showed us this morning as we drove to church and we could see um, the beauty that you created on the trees with the snow and the ice and the fog. And we just, we know that you're in charge and we know that, um, that you have a plan and that, uh, that we need to put our faith and trust in you in this new year. Um, this morning we want to, to bring to you um, Henry Clausen and his family as they, they mourn the passing of, of his wife and um, sister and friend and mother. And we just, we just want to pray that you'll be with them, uplift them and encourage them as, uh, as a new chapter in their, their life will, will begin now too with, without Luella. And we just pray that you will be with them. Uh, we also want to pray for uh, Laura Hebert as uh, she's been transferred to Manitou. We just pray that uh, you will be with her um, as she patiently waits for placement um, closer to home here. And we just pray that you'll be with her family as well. Uh, we also want to pray for this morning for uh, our pastors as uh, we have a new pastor stepping into uh, the lead role and a full-time role and uh, the other one uh, stepping down and, and, and going a different route and uh, just stepping back a little bit. We just pray for, uh, for guidance. We pray for direction. We pray as a church that we can be there to support them and also for, for Corny and Adriana as well as they um, start their, uh, their training. Um, as new pastor couple, and we just pray that as a church we can uplift them and encourage them, and uh, that we can be there to support them as well. And uh, we also want to thank you, Lord, for uh, for blessing us so richly through this last year. Um, though some have maybe gone through trials, um, they have also grown. And uh, and Lord, we just uh, we thank you for everything. We thank you for watching over us and for uh, for giving us hope that uh, that you you have given us and you have given us through your word. We just thank you for that. Uh, we also want to pray for uh, Terry and Rosie Bannon as they continue their, their mission. And uh, it's, uh, I'm sure, times that are tough to always continue, but we just pray that you will be with them and encourage them as well. We want to pray for this morning, the service. Um, we just pray for all aspects of it, and we just pray that uh, this will be a good year for CFC. Um, we also want to pray that you will bless the gift and also the giver. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, seeing as, as how uh, voices aren't doing the best, we're going we're gonna to ask the congregation to help us with singing the next couple of songs. And when I, when I pick songs, I, I sometimes, sometimes, um, I don't like to just, just go through the book and just, just pick a song and we'll just sing it. Um, I do like to look at the words and, and the meanings of it. <clears throat> and I don't know if you guys do that when you sing the songs, you actually... Listen to what the words are in the song and maybe even apply them to your life. Uh, I don't know. Do you, do you do that or do we just sing them through? It, it's very easy to just sing them through and, and not even realize what we're singing. So I would challenge you as we sing these next couple of songs to, to really take the words to heart and think about what they mean and maybe even apply them to your life. Uh, we'll start off with singing 458. Uh, before we sing, though, I was thinking as, as uh, Marvin was reading the announcement there with the team that's going to Querétaro, um, I don't know if you've ever announced who's all going. Have we? I don't think so. And it's, it's, it's not really a secret. At least I don't think so anymore, is it? I know Mary doesn't want everyone to know that she's going. But maybe it would be good to know who's, who's all going. Uh, Davey and Annie Martins are coming with us to Mexico. Well, I say coming with us, so that means me and Adriana are going as well. Um, Corny and Mary Dick are coming with us. Peter Dirksen, Nancy is staying back. Uh, Peter Dirksen is going to be with us. Henry Peter. Peters, where is he? Not here. I was looking at Elmer. That's not Henry. <laughs> Henry Peters is coming with us. And, F, of course, uh, Dave and Tina Fair, the ones that are uh, coordinating all this is... They're going to be there as well, and we're meeting up with uh, Dave's sister, or Tina's sister, or brother? Yeah. Tina's brother and uh, his wife in Mexico. They're meeting us there as well. So it'll be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. And yeah, continue to pray for us as we, as we prepare. 
Let's sing number 458, Take My Life and Let It Be Consecrated. <clears throat> song that we're going to sing is, is kind of along that same line. Number 400, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. I think these are wonderful songs to start off the year, especially to, to actually mean, mean these songs and to, to claim them for your life and, and to tell God to, you know, I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. All I have, my, my lips, my talents, my, my music, my, my money, my, my love, whatever it is. And then to also tell God to have thine own way. Whatever, whatever your will is, whatever you want me to do, I want you to have your way with me. Um, powerful things to say, harder to do in your life, but uh, this is what, what we should be striving for. Number 400. <laughs> Till all shall see 
Christ only. thinking about what Courtney was saying about uh, the words in the song and uh, I used to be a song leader and there was a few songs in the book I purposely didn't choose because I didn't like the the words in the in the song um, the one I can think about was a uh, battle hymn of Republic I think that's in the, this book too and uh, I don't know I didn't feel that we should be singing that in our church um, so uh, thinking about New Year's I uh, found the passage in the Bible in Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 4 to 8. So Philippians chapter 4, uh, Paul tells us here, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men, the Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So, uh, yeah, I was thinking that was uh, a message for, for New Year's. And um, so let's, uh, let's bow for prayer. Dear God, our Father, we thank you for the year gone past. We've had some difficulties, some joys, and we're thankful in all of them. Uh, Sometimes it's hard to be thankful and everything, but we give them to you. Dear Lord, as we start this new year, we pray that you would be strong in our lives. Your spirit would flow through us to give us um, the words to speak, the thoughts, the actions that are yours. Help us to surrender our all to you so that your will would be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Well, that book was set on Song of Solomon, and it's been there for quite a while. Oh, sorry. Okay, me goat for stone. Can you hear me? Is there a bit of reverb? That's better. Okay. Well, good morning all to all of you. Uh, it's good to be here, um, and it's uh, definitely good to be preaching again. It feels like it's been quite a while for me. Um, is it just me or is there a lot of echo? Is that better? A lot of reverb? I feel like I'm echoing quite a bit. I call me Zals here and then, then you know. <laughs> All right. Years ago, it started to take form. Generation after generation and piece by piece, it all came together. It shaped kingdoms, and when it was honored, brought great blessing and joy to entire nations. 
Years ago, it was shared by few to many. Not few to many, but few to many. Today, it is shared by many to few. Years ago, it was highly sought after because few had access to it, and, and it told of healing from sin. Today, it is avoided because it is everywhere, and it convicts of sin. Years ago, it was honored and cherished. Today, very often, it is mocked and ridiculed. Each one of us has it. It sits on our end tables, on our shelves. We have it in our phones and on our computers. We can even open drawers at a hotel room and find it there. It hangs as art on our walls. It's displayed in government buildings. Its shape has taken form over many ways, some through the voice of its creator, some of it came by dreams, and still others through revelation. Some of it was even by, written by the creator's own finger. But all of it was inspired by the creator. It was created for us to give instruction, to show us the creator's love to show us the Creator's justice, to show us the Creator's grace, to show us the Creator's mercy, and to give us just a glimpse of the Creator's glory. In John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and apart from Him not even one thing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of mankind. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not grasp it. It's John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Before we continue, let's pray. God, thank you so much for a new year. Thank you for the year that's gone by. Thank you for the blessings that were in it. Thank you for the struggle that was in it, and how it shaped us, and how how it brought us closer to you. Uh, and Lord Jesus, if it didn't bring us closer to you, then forgive us uh, and help it to help the memories of it to draw us near to you. Uh, Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings of the, of the past year. The, the, the amount of blessings is not even countable by us. Um, we can count our blessings one by one and name them, but... I don't think we could think of all of them. So thank you for all the blessings and the ones we can't even think about because there was so many. Uh, thank you for this congregation. Uh, Lord Jesus, for the con this congregation that has come here Sunday after Sunday to open and to hear your word, your word that you have preserved over the years. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are the word, that, that through spoken uh, through written, um, Lord Jesus, you are the word, and it became flesh, and it was given to us. And it, you died on the cross for our sin. Thank you that the word became flesh. Thank you that you came here. Uh, Lord Jesus, in this new year, uh, help us as a church to be a church that loves your word. And help us to make that our resolution, that this is a discipline that we will, as a church, do our very best to fulfill, is to love your word, to read your word, to hear your word, and to study your word. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, as we open your word today, I pray that you would be with us, that you would inspire us, that uh, you would give us clarity, and that your Holy Spirit would move among us here. In your name we pray. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 14 it says, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Uh, just, a, just a reminder and, and just to kind of, what's the right word? A reminder, I guess that's the right word, is that when I come up here and I preach, uh, when we come up here and we preach, any one of us pastors, that the Word of God, we are not coming up here and saying the Word of God applies to y'all, but it doesn't apply to me. So when I prepare a sermon, I am struck every time I do it by the words of Scripture 
and how it applies to me. And there is nothing that I can preach that will not apply to me. That will only apply to you and not to me. There is nothing there. So when I preach this, it is not... And if it comes out as an... As a... A lecture almost. I'm not lecturing you. I'm lecturing us. And I'm encouraging us. And I'm... It's not just to you. I'm not up here saying, this is what I do, and you guys should do exactly what I do. No, I'm up here saying, this is what Scripture says. This is what we should do. And so, so we'll keep that in mind as we go through this message. Uh, this message is dedicated to the Word of God. If you hadn't captured that already in your minds, it is to the Word of God. So, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus is the Word of God. He became flesh, He dwelt among us, and He is the authority in every Christian life. Today, as we start a new year, I would like to, uh, us to examine um, a Christian discipline that is vital to our faith. Uh, the discipline is threefold, and it is inspired from a book that I've been reading, The Christian uh, the disciplines of a Christian life. Um, so Bible intake, this is the Christian discipline. It's threefold. And the first, the first one is hearing the word of God. I love taco soup. Schmack me ganz schein. But I would ask here, is there anyone here that knows how to make it? I've already asked Adriana, she said she didn't know how to make it. <laughs> but after I said what I wanted, then you said you didn't. <laughs> Can anybody here describe to me how to make taco soup in basic form? Anybody brave enough? So follow, follow the recipe, but I'm asking for the recipe. <laughs> Benjamin knows. Cut tacos, <laughs> there you go. So if I were to ask you, one of you, how to make taco soup, and you would do describe to me, okay, you first got to, and I actually have never made taco soup, so forgive me if this is wrong. So you have to fry your ground beef and, and uh, throw it in a pot, and you got to add some water and maybe some, some spices, some soup powder, uh, throw in a bunch of jalapenos and corn and beans, and make sure it's juicy enough. Uh, tomatoes, bay leaves, wow. I had no idea. <laughs> so, so, and so, so you were to come to me and you were to tell me, this is how you make taco soup. And, and I, would, I would stand there and I would listen intently. And I, maybe I'd even make some notes. And then I would say, oh, okay, okay, I'll look at my notes. Sounds good. Chocolate chips, schmonfat, and ice cream. Uh, this is how I'll make it from now on. That, that'd be a little weird, right? That, then you'd, okay, you weren't listening. And this is what we do with, with Scripture so often, right? I mean, I have access to all kinds of recipes. I'm pretty sure I have uh, Mennonite girls can cook a uh, um, cookbook in our drawer, I think. Do we? Oh, just online? Okay, it's online, apparently. And, and if, even if I don't have it, okay, so we can find it online. And if I, don't, if I don't do that, I have phone numbers of a whole bunch of people who know how to make it. Um, in fact, I, I married a wonderful woman who knows exactly how to make it. And she makes it by memory. And she does a fantastic job with it. So I can ask her for explicit details on how to make this soup. But if I don't listen to her, then help me at all anushed. Then it's all useless. She can say it. She can say it. And she can say it, and she can repeat herself over and over and over. But if she does not listen, halt me nushed. Then I will be adding my ice cream, schmonfat, and what else was there? Chocolate chips. Right? So, so directions, instructions helps us nothing unless we are willing to listen. As Jesus was teaching a crowd of people, a woman calls out from the crowd... We find this story in Luke 11, Luke chapter 11. A woman calls out from the crowd and says, Blessed is the womb that carried you. But Jesus 
responds and says, Rather, blessed is the one who hears the word of God and keeps it. Blessed are you when you hear the word of God and you keep it. Blessed are you. Because if we don't listen to the instruction and keep it in our mind, then it's just like the recipe of chocolate chips, schmonfot, and ice cream would be a disaster. I think. You can try it and let me know. (laughs) Just hearing the word of God is not enough, but blessed is the one who hears and follows the instructions given. We too have all kinds of information available to us. All of us have access to hearing the word of God read to us in all kinds of different ways. I can take out my phone and I can listen to whatever I want. In fact, if I want to hear the scriptures in Plotich, I can do that. If I want to hear the, the scriptures in Spanish, I can do that. Although to, also, but I can. We have access to all kinds of preachers as well. I can turn on the radio and I can hear John Wheeler from back to the, or sorry, from John Wheeler from the Harlech Bautschaf, and I can hear a, a plot each sermon. I can hear the word of God being taught. Or I can go to the back to the Bible and hear John Newfield teach the word of God. I can download his app and actually listen to it on the app and I can choose whatever sermon I want, whatever topic that I want to hear, I can choose that and listen to it. We have all kinds of access to it. Do we realize or have we taken for granted the blessing that we have today to hear the word of God? Wayne Cordario the pastor of New Hope Christian Fellowship in Honolulu, outlined that he went to Henan province in China to train church leaders, 22 in all, many of whom rode by train 13 hours to get to this event, which was held secretly in a hotel room. They all sat on a hardwood floor as he taught them all day long from 8 a.m. to to 5 p.m. Cordero recalled asking the Christians what might happen if they get caught. Oh, you'll get deported in 24 hours, and we will go to prison for three years, said the people. The pastor then asked the leaders how many of those present had been in prison for their faith. Eighteen out of the 22 in attendance raised their hands. Cadero asked how many people the 22 church leaders oversaw. A little over 20 million, they calculated. Cadero proceeded to hand out Bibles, but he did not have enough to go around. He noticed that one woman in attendance handed her Bible to the person sitting next to her. Cadero then observed something interesting. While everyone with a Bible turned to the passage for study, she recited it by heart. The pastor approached the woman during a break as he was amazed by what he had had witnessed. You recited the whole chapter, Cordero noted. Oh yes, I've memorized many chapters, the woman responded. Where did you memorize so many chapters? In prison, you have much time in prison, the woman said. Cordero asked her if Bibles were uh, confiscated by authorities in prison. Oh yes, people bring in scriptures written on pieces of paper, the woman replied. But if they find the pieces of paper, won't won't they confiscate that? Oh yes, that's why you memorize them as fast as you can, the woman explained. Because even if they take the paper away, they can't take what's hidden in your heart. The pastor was taken aback by the woman's story and all that he had witnessed while ministering to the people for for three days. He asked those in attendance how he could pray for them. Wayne, you guys can gather like this in America whenever you want to. Would you pray that one day we will be just like you? Cordero told them that he would not do so, which took the Christians by surprise. He then explained why. You guys rode on a train for 13 hours to get here. In my country, if you've got to drive more than one hour, people don't come. You sat on a wooden floor for three days. In my country, if people have to sit for more than 40 minutes, they leave. You sat here 
You not only sat here for three days on a hard wooden floor, but you did it without air conditioning. In my country, if it's not padded pews and air conditioning, people often, often don't come back. He continued, In my country, we have an average of two Bibles per family. We don't read any of them. You hardly have any Bibles, and you memorize them from pieces of paper. Cordero looked at the people and said, I will not pray that you become like us, but I will pray that we become like you. Ouch. Seven ich ein bisschen verdarben. A little bit spoiled. I am the youngest of the spoiled children. What does that say for me? Too often, when we have a guest preacher here, and he goes 15, 20 minutes over time, we don't even remember what his sermon was about because we're too busy grumbling about that we had to sit here for a bit longer. Or we just get up and leave. Too often, we're thinking about lunch and how this service might disrupt our lunch plans if we stay too long or if the singing goes too long. Too often, everything else in life becomes more of a priority than coming to church and hearing the word of God taught. I implore you, church, to prioritize the word of God spoken in public. Because if you cannot prioritize this, your children are watching you. They are watching you. And the priorities that you make, they will make as well. In fact, if you don't prioritize it, then they'll probably prioritize a little less than you did. A good friend of mine mentioned once when he was growing up, church was such a priority for them. Saturday night, there had been a big windstorm. And a tree had fallen over their driveway. And the dad had shouted up the stairs. Well, he had looked out the window and said, well, I guess we're not going to church today. And dad had yelled up the stairs and saying, son, come on, we got to go and get the chainsaw and, and get this, cha- this tree out of the way. Sorry if I'm not telling that accurately, whoever told that to me. But it was a priority. Church was a priority. Can we make it a priority? And please hear, hear me in this. That I don't say, and I'm not saying here, that you are blessed to be here, coming here and be under my teaching. If, I, if my attitude is ever that, then I should step down and never show my face here again. But we are so incredibly blessed to have a a man called by God coming from who knows where to come here and preach the word of God to us. We are incredibly blessed. Let us not take that for granted. It has never been this easy to access the word of God. Never. In all the generations, for 6,000 years, it's never been this easy to access it. And how many Bibles do each of you have in your home? I probably have, between all of us, at least 12. That's just a guess, but at least least 12 Bibles that we have in our home. We have two TVs. Those TVs get used a lot more than our Bibles do. The public reading of God's word is so important. The words of scripture bring us conviction of sins, healing from wounds, comfort, peace during troubling times. In 2 Kings, we find the story of Josiah, king of Judah. He becomes king when he is eight years old. Verse 2 of chapter 22 says, he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. He becomes king in a very dark time in the history of God's people. The previous kings have brought in idol worship, even as idol, even idol worship in the temple of the Lord. 
They had sacrificed their own children to idols, essentially to demons, and God's wrath was about to be kindled. The book of the law had been lost during this time, thrown aside, and it was only after Josiah becomes king and commands the complete restoration of the temple that the scrolls are found again. Second uh, Kings chapter 22, verse 10 through 11 says, Moreover, Shaphan, the scribe, informed the king, saying, Hilkiah, the priest, has given me a book. And Shaphan read it in the presence of the king. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. He heard the word of God and he tore his clothes. The word of God made him mourn over the sins of his people because, because it revealed them. It revealed their sins. And that is what the word of God does to us. It is sharper than a two-edged sword and it pierces our hearts. And just writing this sermon, how many times I was embarrassed by my own actions, embarrassed by my own lack of discipline. And, and too often the word of God pierces us and, and it brings us back to a realization, whew, I am not, I am not measuring up. But I am not um, not lack. Uh, by the grace of God, we read of the grace of God. And this, these words too. And thank God for his grace. It cut to the heart. Hebrews 12, or sorry, Hebrews 4, 12 through 13 says, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword, even penetrating as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are open and laid bare to the eyes of, of him who, to whom we must answer. And the word of God accomplishes this. I had this mental image of, of um, penetrating as far as, the di- as far as the division of soul and spirit, both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It goes so deep. You know when you schlach shvin, and you're, and you're deboning all the meat, and you have your knife there, and you're cutting the, the meat off the bone, and, and it's dividing that. It's, it's going so deep. It's penetrating so deep, and the Word of God does that to us. It penetrates deep, deep in our soul. Discipline number two, sub-discipline number two. First one is hearing God's word. And I'm, I'm, I'm doing these in order that they're easiest to hardest. Reading of God's word is number two. Matthew chapter four, Satan comes to tempt Jesus. Jesus has been fasting for 40 days. Saying he was hungry was an understatement. He would have been at the point of death. His body would, be, would have been eating itself. And Satan knows just what to say to entice us when we are at our weakest. If you are the son of God, command that these stones become bread, Satan says to him. But Jesus answers and says, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Judging from my appearance, I definitely don't take the word of God, the bread of life, as more important than actual bread. Because I am a lot more spiritually lean than I am physically. Man will not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God, and we have it recorded here, We have it in front of us. And if you're like me, you have 12 copies of it sitting at home and another copy in your phone and another copy on your computer. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God 
the discipline of taking a paper copy into your hands and reading it for yourself is a very, very healthy practice. Second Timothy says, All scripture is inspired by God and beneficial for teaching, for rebuke, for correction, for training in righteousness. So if this is true, if it's all inspired by God and beneficial for teaching, rebuke, for correction, and training in righteousness, shouldn't we at least read it? From beginning to end? Every word that comes out of God, out of the mouth of God himself? How often should we read it? There's a British preacher named John Blanchards, and his response says it well. Surely we, only, surely we only have to be realistic and with honesty with, and be honest with ourselves to know how regularly we need to turn to the Bible. How often do we face problems, temptations, and pressure? Every day. And how often do we need instruction, guidance, and greater encouragement? Every day. To catch all these felt needs up into an even greater issue how often do we need to see God's face, hear his voice, feel his touch, know his power? The answer to all these questions is the same, every day. As the American evangelist D.L. Moody put it, a man can no more take in a supply of grace for, a, for the future than he can eat for enough for the next six months, or take sufficient air into his lungs at one time to sustain life for a week. We, we must draw upon God's boundless store of grace from day to day as we need it. And we need it every day. As problems arise, how often do problems arise? I don't know about you, but I have problems every single day. As temptations arise, I don't know about you, but I have temptations every single day. And as we need to breathe every single day, every, we can't take a deep enough breath to last us for a, even an hour. We can't take a deep enough breath to last us a week. We need it all the time. And that's, that's how we need the Word of God. You want to experience growth in your Christian life, then read the Bible every day. Every day. Is it easy? No. No, it's not. That's why they call it a discipline. As we live in a generation where most people know how to read and all of us have at least one Bible, or at least we should, and if there is anyone here who doesn't, please let me know and I will have, make sure that you leave here with one. Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blessed is the one who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy, and keep the things which are written in it, for the time is near. Our third sub-discipline, which is the hardest one, studying the Word of God. I struggle with this discipline the most. I have said it was for, uh, for many reasons. I have justified my actions or for my non-actions many ways. And this quote really put it in perspective for me. And it really slapped me upside the head. R.C. Sproul said this, Here then is the real problem of our negligence. We fail in our duty to study God's word not so much because it is difficult to understand, not so much because it's, it is dull and boring, but because it is work. Our problem is not a lack of intelligence or a lack of passion. Our problem is, is that we're lazy. Oh, and, and I couldn't deny him that. Because it's true. And I won't speak that for you. I will speak it for me. That I don't study the word of God enough. Because it is work. And that it is. It is work. To prepare a sermon I have to study the word of God. It is work. For a 40 minute. 30 minute 40 minute sermon. I, I work at it for 20 hours. It's work. And that's why it's so important is because it's a discipline. But it's hard. Let's study the word of God. 
the book that inspired this message, The Spiritual Disciplines for the Christian Life, the author gives this illustration. If reading the Bible can be compared to cruising the width of a clear sparkling lake in a motorboat, studying the Bible is like slowly crossing that same lake in a glass-bottomed boat. The motorboat crossing provides an overview of the lake and a swift passing view of its depths. The glass bottom boat of study, however, takes you beneath the surface of Scripture for an unhurried look of clarity and detail that's normally missed by those who simply just read the text. As author Jerry Bridges put it, reading give us, gives us breadth, but study gives us depth. And we look at some examples. Ezra, the prophet Ezra would be one of them. In chapter 7, verse 10 of Ezra, it says, For Ezra had firmly resolved to study the law of the Lord and to practice it and to teach its statutes and ordinances in Israel. Ezra, firmly resolved. And this is good. It's, it's good to even put them in the same order that he did. Ezra firmly resolved to study the law of the Lord. And then he set himself to practice it. And then to teach his statutes and ordinances. So firstly, firmly resolved to study it. And then he set to practice it himself. And then he, he, he set to teach his statutes and ordinances to others. Ezra disciplined himself to the study of God's word. Paul instructs Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 14 and 16 through 16. Remind them of these things and solemnly exhort them to, in, the, in the presence of the God to not to dispute about words, which is useless and leads to, leads to the ruin of the listeners. Be diligent, or the King James Version would say study, to present yourself approved to God as a worker who does not need to be ashamed, accurately, ac accurately handling the word of truth, but avoid worldly and empty chatter, for it will lead to further ungodliness. That first word in verse 15, it says, um, it says, be diligent in the NASB. If I looked it up in the Greek, and it's used multiple words, that, I can't remember what the word is, and I can't pronounce it anyway, so, um, but it's, it's this, used the same way 11 times in the New Testament, and it's used for be diligent, it's used for study, it's used for many different things, but, but be diligent, it's kind of the same, the same synonym of be diligent. And it's used for that, for that kind of purpose. And so study, and I just kind of put both in there. Be diligent, study to present your self-approved to God as a worker who does not need to be ashamed, accurately handing, handling the word of truth. But avoid worldly and empty chatter, for it will lead to further ungodliness. Avoid disputing about conspiracy theories, empty words, worldly and empty chatter. This is useless. It's useless. Because all it does is brings us further away from Jesus. If it's not in here and we argue about it, it's useless. Conspiracy theories have never brought us closer to Jesus. So, be diligent in the study of God's word and present yourself to him as a worker that does not need to be ashamed. I hear the word of God. This is my encouragement to you. No, rather, this is my... I don't have the right word. My urging to you. I implore you. Hear the word of God. Read the word of God. Study the word of God. Do it daily, every day. Because as you need it, as you need it, do it. And you need it every day. I guarantee you that. In this world, you need it every day. And if, and if you can't take it with you, get a tie like Abe here. And it has, for God so loved the world. And it has the whole verse on it. It's a beautiful verse. Like the people from China, they wrote it on pieces of paper and they memorized it. Because it's that precious. Amen. 
In closing, and this is the reason why I turn to this page here, I want us, the reason we have a Bible here in front of the pulpit, it's for good reason. I want us to be a church that studies the Word of God, that loves the Word of God. And so, I want us to to take this seriously and to understand what the Word of God is. And Isaiah chapter 40, verses 6 through 8, it says, could you all stand with me, please, for this? It says, the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as flowers of the field. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Each one of us will die. We will. It is appointed to man once to die. We will fade away. One day no one will remember my name. But the word of God has stood the test of time. From right in the beginning when the first word of it was written to now, it has stood the test of time. Then, we as a church should definitely make it important. We as a church should definitely make it a priority. And so I implore you, church, especially in the day we are living in today, Stand firm in the word of God. Because it will sustain you. It will keep you faithful to him. To our savior. And one day we will stand before Jesus. And he can say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. Thank you. You may be seated. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your word. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, when we when we don't take it seriously, when we take it for granted and we see it laying there on our bedside table. We see it sitting on our bookshelf. We see it on the stand on the piano and we have it there because we want other people to think that we read the Bible. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Forgive us for not taking you seriously. Forgive us when we use the Bible as a pride thing rather than rather than your words. Forgive us for when we just use it as decoration and hang it on our walls, but we don't follow it and we don't actually read it. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for taking it for granted and neglecting it. Forgive us for our laziness when we don't read it every day. Forgive me, Lord Jesus, for being lazy and not reading your word every day. Help us as a church. Help me as their pastor to be diligent in studying the word of God. Your words. Help us, Lord Jesus, to make this such an important thing a priority. Help us to hang it on our walls. Help us to display our Bibles on our end tables and put them everywhere around the house and read them. And to go to these decorative art pieces that look so beautiful with such beautiful words of life written on them and stand there and read them over and over and over because they are words of life. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace toward us, that even though we slip up, even though we forget about you, you forgive us, and you take us back each and every time. Help 2023, Lord Jesus, to be a year of sanctification, a year of bringing us back to you in closeness Help us to read your word daily and just grow so close to you. Protect us from Satan, Lord Jesus, in 2023. 
those who are struggling with pornography or other addictions, Lord Jesus, that they would be freed. People who are struggling in their marriages, Lord Jesus, may in this year be the year that you would bring them back together and provide healing for their marriages. For those who are struggling with sicknesses, Lord Jesus, may it be in this year that you bring them back to you in healing. And if not healing, Lord Jesus, healing of the heart. And just a, a nearness to them, Lord. Thank you for all that you do for us. Bless this congregation, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. A challenge like that, there's so many hymns that, that come to mind that, that would speak to that. And maybe the, the song that, that I had chosen here for the last song will fit it as well. Um, another a song of prayer to Jesus, number 408. We'll sing it together. I surrender all. have the benediction after the third verse. Let's stand. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. This is my prayer for you for 2023. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord faith cause his face to shine on you and to be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face to you and give you peace. Amen.